Happy New Year, everyone. I'm glad everyone had a wonderful 2023. And we're on track to have another great year in the year 2024. Welcome to another video from SkyTech Enterprise Solutions. Let's get into it. In this video, we take a look at a typical SharePoint list. In this list, um, I do have several columns. Um, and these are the columns here. As you can see, these are the columns. These are the column names. Um, and here you can you can see the column types, right? So for instance, the title is a single line of text. Priority is a choice item. Um, and so on and so forth. The goal of this video is to take a look at the very unglamorous task or activity within SharePoint of renaming columns or creating columns, all right? Creating new ones, renaming existing ones and the repercussions, and also changing data types of SharePoint list columns. Now, caveat, sometimes it does more harm than good to change the column type of a column. I mean, the column data type of a column that exists, if it's already connected to an application such as InfoPath, uh, Forms, or, you know, it could be a power app that's connected to this list. If you start changing column types, you're basically ruining your project, right? The, the repercussions that will occur within your power apps or your um, InfoPath form or um, let's say you have this list and folks are actually using it. So you have data entry happening or you already have existing data. You're going to ruin your data. Um, so we'll take a look at why not to do certain things and why to do certain things, et cetera, et cetera. So to give you a little bit of a background, this SharePoint list that I have here, um, I imported from, I imported as a spreadsheet, right? So I I had a spreadsheet and then I imported it in here as a SharePoint list. Um, it did come with certain names, certain columns and column names. Um, but I think some of the data types, somehow something happened and, and things didn't come in as I wanted it to. So with that said, uh, I'm going to go ahead and start making changes now. This list that we're looking at does not have data um, in it currently. So I can actually go ahead and make these changes without affecting any data that's already in the list itself. Um, and also there's nothing, there's no application connected to this list. So there's no Power App, um, you know, program that's connected to this list, which is the back end. And for those old school uh, SharePoint aficionados, there is no info platform connected to this. I don't have a, uh, any application connected to this list. So technically I can do whatever uh, changes and edits that I want. All right, so let's go and take a look at this. For title, you know, having it be a single line of text is fine for me. Um, in terms of priority, keeping it as a choice is fine. Status is also a choice that's also great. Request your email, that's fine for me. I'll be capturing um, the email address of a requester, right? Now, what I'll be doing with this list is that I'll be building a Canvas app, um, a Power App, Canvas app attached to this list. And it's going to have the interface, and we'll do this in a separate video. But for today, we're simply looking at this boring tasks task of making changes to my SharePoint list on the back end. Um, so for requester email, my goal here is to use the uh, SharePoint, I mean SharePoint Power Apps uh, function to generate that information. But what I can also do is to have instead of having this as a single line of text. I could also have requester email come in as uh, a person um, or group data type. So how would I do that? 
I would go down here and create a column. All right, so I'll just say, I'll come in here and I'll type the name requested. Requested by, um, now I'm already using this name, so I can use this column name again. So here, we'll, I'll just go ahead and put a, I'll put an, an underscore here to differentiate it. And I can go and say person or group. And I'll go with name with presence. And that's about it. Um, I'll hit this OK button, which is off screen currently. And you'll notice that I got my, where's my requester? Requested by. Uh, let me do a search for that. Requested. Yep, so you see I have my original, oh wow, I did have another requested by here, personal group, and then I have my requested underscore by, um, and then up here, interesting. Okay, so we do have requested a group. Anyway, so as you can see, I have that, I have a duplicate, so I'm gonna go ahead and just get rid of one, click on my delete button, and so now I'm down to my, one and only requested by as a personal group. Okay, that is awesome. Uh, sometimes that happens. Requester email, I'll keep that as a single line of text. Task name, I want this to be name of task. So I'm just gonna go in here and I'll say name of task, okay? And I want it to be multiple lines of text. Um, I wanna do, six, I'll say five five lines for editing, number of lines for editing. I'll click on my OK button and we're good to go. Name of task, as you can see that. Carbon copy, yes. Um, I wanna change this also to carbon copy. I'll say carbon copy email, right? I'm gonna keep that also as a single line of text. Hit OK. Okay. Um, I want to go in here and say intranet, yes or no, live time. So this I want to change into a date, time, data column. And as you can see, I don't even have the option, right, to change to change this uh, column um, into a uh, a date and time data type. So what I'm going to do is I don't need this column any more, anymore. I'm gonna copy the name of it to my clipboard and hit delete. So I'll get rid of this um, this column and I'm gonna recreate it. So I'll call it lifetime. Notice that since I actually deleted the list, uh, the column, not the list, but the column itself, I can reuse the column name, right? So now I wanna do date and time. And oh, by the way, let's see. So date and time, okay, date only, right, but I want date and time. That's that's the big deal here. Um, I'll keep the standard display format, and I will go ahead and hit OK off screen. So now I have the same column that I deleted, lifetime, date and time. That's my data column. So now I go down the list, website, page, it's been added to, so here I want to change this to URL, right? I think that's more, that's what I want. <laughs> it doesn't have to make sense. So URL page, URL changes made to, right? So that's what I want to call this. Since it's going to be a URL, it could be, I'm, you know, I just need multiple lines of text for that. I'm gonna hit okay. And then, um, did you review, I'll just change this to, did you review your, I'll just say, did you review requirements? Okay, I think that makes more sense. It's gonna be a single, well, for this one, we want it to be a choice, right? So we'll do a simple yes or no here. That makes sense. And oh, by the way, I don't want a default value, 
right? So I'm going to hit OK off uh, screen here and uh, completed by deadline. So this is also another problem. I want this to be a date and time value. Uh, so I'm going to copy the name of this column, but I'll delete the column because I don't need it. And I'll come down here and make a change. Uh, sorry, create a new one. So in this case, I'm going to say completion. I'll just say complete by, right? That makes sense to me. Complete by date, something like that, right? And again, we're going with date and time uh, data type. And I want, so, okay, in this case, I want it to be date only. I'm not really interested in the time, okay? And I don't want any default as well. So I'm going to hit OK here off screen and so on and so forth. You know, that's, again, this activity here, um, it's not that glamorous. But you're build, you're normalizing your data on the back end. You're making sure your data types are great. You need to spend a lot of time here making sure things are good before you start building your Power App. Um, you even connect your Power App to this and start building it out. We'll do that in the next video. But for now, I think we're we're getting close uh, to where we want to be. Some of these columns here, like AM, PM, I'm not going to need it. Um, because I already have um, date time functionality in one of the columns that I just created. Um, something like assignee has got to become a people um, column. So I'm going to get rid of assignees. Well, actually, you know what? Hit cancel there. Um, what did, what, like, what uh, data type is it? Assignee is a number? No, it, it has to be a single line of text. Or better yet, I'll make it a people picker, um, so I don't need uh, that column to be as a number data type. So I'm going to change it to people or person, and name with person is uh, name with presence. It's that's good enough for me, right? So as you can see, there's still some work to be done here. Assign requested by assigned to assignees. Um, those are all. Uh, personal group data types, assigned developers, assigned developers. Yeah, so these two need to become people and groups. So I'm going to delete. As you can see, I don't have a people and groups option here. So I'm going to just delete this guy and create a new one. And it's going to be people, personal group. Uh, I'll say pe people and groups. But person and group, I'll hit OK. And then the other one was the um, assigned developers. Was that it? Hold on, let's see. I do an assigned. Okay, so assigned to email address, that's fine. Um, should I change the data type as well? Not necessarily. I'll keep it that way. Assigned by. Yes, this needs to change, right? It has to be, I mean, I can keep it as a single line of text or, right, because I'll be capturing the name of the person that's logged in who's doing the assigning at that very instance. So I'll change this to a single line of text and I'll hit OK. And that's that, right? I got that warning talking about, hey, you're about to make changes to your list and whatnot. That's great. This is fine. Um, so guys, what I'm trying to build here is some sort of a ticketing system um, that is made is made or meant for um, for web developers within an organization. So I'm building the system from scratch, right? Now, I did test this out with the um, the copilot feature in Power Apps, and it's amazing. I'll do a separate video on that. You can tell Copilot what you want. So in this case, I went in and I just typed in uh, build a ticketing system for a web developer unit, right, or department. And Copilot was able to build the, the, the back end and the front end. And, you know, the, the UI looked decent, right? So it's, it's something you can use as a start to build upon. 
Um, but then again, you're telling AI to do something for you. You need to know how to do it yourself, right? Because if you have to troubleshoot whatever, or if you need to um, enhance what AI builds for you, you should be able to know, you know, go under the, the hood and actually um, understand what's happening there. So um, this will conclude our video for today. Um, I'll just uh, go ahead and make some more changes here, get this to exactly where I need it to be. And we will, um, I'll see you in the next video. But at least for now, you know that you can actually come back here to the back end of your list and make changes to data uh, types and columns and, and column names. Sometimes you just have to delete a whole column and create a brand new one. Sometimes you can actually edit what you already have. All right, see you in the next video. Thanks.